the end of this one. Okay, um, it's Robert Acosta here, um, AP, with, along with um, Paul, Mr. Raspi. Mr. Paul Raspi. So we're going to get started with this observ observation feedback session. Hey, Mr. Raspi. Great to see you. Hey, great Good. to see you. Same thing here. Um, it was a pleasure being in your classroom earlier today, mm -hmm. and I wanted to share with you some of the feedback that I had for you. Mm -hmm. All right. So what I wanted to tell you, first of all, was I wanted to um, praise you for the good tone of voice you had in the classroom, the rapport that you have with your students. It's obvious that you work on building your relationship with them, and it's apparent when you walk into the classroom, you can tell there's a lot of joy for, of learning. The kids are really enthusiastic about being in your classroom. Thank you. And um, moving on, a question that I had for you as it pertains to the class itself was, mm -hmm. what was the specific purpose of the lesson that you had this one time? Uh, well, my purpose of the lesson was to help the students to be able to formulate uh, and identify uh, overall frequency tables, and then we also went over area. Okay. And how do you feel? Do you feel you were successful in achieving that goal during the lesson? Uh, absolutely. You know, I, I have about 90% of my students right now that um, I feel are, you know, reaching that level of, you know, understanding, be able to use that, the concepts uh, fluently. Uh, but I have about four individuals just in that certain class that, you know, I, I'm having consistent and constant behavioral issues, a uh, couple of academic issues, a little bit of tardiness, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get to that 100%. You know, and I agree with you. I did notice kind of like the same thing. Mm -hmm. I saw where most of the students were participating and working on their problems, and you had a couple of the disruptors, a couple of the kids who, who need some uh, a, a better structure, so to speak, with the lesson. Mm -hmm. And I want to give you a couple of pointers on things that you can do mm -hmm. to bring your class um under control in a more structured manner for those kids as well as everybody else. And have you ever heard of the, um, the slant strategy, slant, as a way of calling students to attention? Okay. Uh, the way that slant looks is uh, something like this. You can call the kids to do a slant for you, and you can do something like uh, some kind of a chant like slant, and have all of them come back to attention. Instead of trying to get them to look at you, instead of saying like, Jacob, pay attention, come on guys. Uh, Manrique, come on, eyes on me. You know, it, it's a more natural fit, it, and it's um, what they call Madison Chusip. You're not calling out the kid's name directly, mm -hmm. but you're calling the whole class to attention, and everybody responds. They get that kind of like peer pressure from the other kids also paying attention. So you want to try and use that. So I'm going to model for you what that looks like. Okay. And the way you're going to use it, it as well, I want to model that for you as well. Okay? Cool. cool. All right. So let me see if I can stand over here, and, or maybe sit over here so the camera can capture this here. So when you introduce it to your kids in class, you want to tell them, guys, I'm going to teach you a new strategy that we're going to use to get everybody back to attention. Okay. That way I won't have to be like, you know, using my voice so much to get you all to get attention or pay attention to me in class. And It's called slant. Okay. And what it means is the following. When I call for you guys to do slant, what it means is that you're going to do the following steps. You're going to immediately go silent. Mm -hmm. You want to go ahead and begin listening to what I'm saying. Okay. I'm talking to you all as you're listening and you're all paying close attention to what I'm saying. No talking during this time mm -hmm. at all. Reinforce that. And tracking the teacher. Your eyes will be following me as well. So I want you to be very intentional and you will practice this with them for several minutes during the class. Mm -hmm until they all get it, and you want to model for them, and you can play around with it a little bit with the kids, you know, say something like, like for instance, like when I'm calling Slan and Jacob is the only one still playing around, then everybody can just give him a look, and then I'll call Slant again, Slant, and everybody does it again, and look at Jacob <laughs> until he gets it, and we will not move forward until he gets it. Yes. You know, play with it a little bit, okay. uh, but kids like chanting, they like doing stuff like Slant, boom, stuff like that, it's, you know, you're going to see how they react to it. But this is one way of calling the kids back to attention in the classroom. Okay. Without having to like be as direct calling the kids by name. Like you sit down, you do this, you do that. Absolutely. It's a good way of bringing them all back to your class as well. Okay. And since I just started observing you very recently, I know that you're basically a brand new teacher. You've only been around uh, for a couple of months. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of more quick things I want to give to you. Okay. And we had this discussion before. I think that you can handle a lot of the feedback that we'll give you not just one little bit at a time. You've been able to uh, adopt other things before in a, in a good manner in spite of the fact that we've given you a couple things at a time. Sure. So I want you to use slant, but I also want you to look at using your timers as you're planning your lessons out. Make sure that you allocate 
the times in the same way that we had them in the lesson plan form that I gave you, where you have like 10 minutes for the opening, 10 for the introduction of new materials, 15 for the guided practice, 25 for independent practice. When you look at your lesson plan, use those times, but use a timer in the classroom, an online timer, mm -hmm. to pace your lesson, to allow yourself enough time to get to the DOL. Very crucial and very important to be able to get through the lesson cycle. Mm -hmm. If you can do that with your lesson planning and use a timer within the classroom during your lesson, that's gonna help you a whole lot as well. But the biggest rock that I think that's gonna benefit you, and again, I wanna reiterate that uh, we're working with you, Raspi, with more than one uh, feedback uh, item at a time because I know you can handle stuff like this and you've done it before. Mm -hmm. And I think that ever since we started doing this, you're really accelerating your improvement Thank you. and your performance, and that's why I'm giving you some of the extra work. Uh, what I want to do with the lesson planning part is uh, I want to be able to meet with you after school. Cool. I want to sit together, work on the scripting of the beginning of that lesson okay. so we can really, really be able to like line by line script out exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. As you're introducing slant to your kids, mm -hmm. we, want, we want to be able to outline it and also outline the hook to your next lesson as well. So that way when you walk into the classroom, you just follow your script and you can see how much more structured your classroom is going to feel at that time with the kids. So those are the things we're going to work on. Uh, and you can work on your own with the slant. That's not very hard. You create your posters. Mm -hmm. The online timer is a very technical thing. You just put the timer and follow it. But with the lesson planning, uh, we're going to get both of us together, and I'll help you script it out, and then I'll come and observe you. Sounds okay? good. What do you think? Sounds good? Fantastic. Okay, when do you think it'll be a good time to come around um, sometime later on in the week? Uh, later on this week? Probably Thursday. Thursday? Okay. All right, that's the deal. So we meet today after school, work on the scripting of that Thursday lesson. Okay. And then uh, I expect you to work on Slant tomorrow with the kids. Absolutely. And your online timers part, and between now and then, we can have three that's things great. to look forward to that are really going to help you structure that lesson. Very cool. And then if your kids are still, you know, giving you a hard time after we put these things in place, you know, we, we always follow up with our uh, classroom behavior management plans and all that. But, um, but I think it's going to help you a whole lot, and it's going to take a lot of those out. Uh, little issues that we have in the classroom every now and then. Okay. All right? Cool. Okay. Thank you so much again. All right. Thanks so much, Paul. How do you Thank feel? You. How do you feel about the um, items that we give you? I think these are awesome. I'm looking forward to it. I always appreciate the okay. feedback. Um, and, okay. you know, I, I put a lot of trust in you guys, so okay. you guys are always there for me when, you know, I ask for a little bit of help, so this is, this is okay. good. Okay. And I know that you ask for the feedback and you want to get more and more, but if at any time you feel you've gotten too much, let me know. We can pare it down a little bit. But as long as you continue making the kind of progress you've been making the past few weeks, you know, mm -hmm. and you can handle that amount of uh, action step, that's fine. The thing is that, you know, to, to differentiate the work for you in ways that it really, it really doesn't overwhelm you, just to make sure that you can do that at a pace where you can feel comfortable with it as well. Absolutely. Okay? All Thank right. you. Thanks so much, Paul. Thank you again. All Thanks. Right. Thanks. All right. Thank you, guys. Let me stop it here.